Hello, and welcome to this video series on developing a more practical understanding of leadership. I am Jelko Zidrich, better known as Zed. I am the founder of the Civic Innovation Incubator. What is leadership? How do you define it? Can you? We've been trying to understand leadership for almost 3,000 years. From one of the first great leaders, Cyrus the Great of Persia, and then philosophers Plato, Aristotle, Sun Tzu, Cicero, we learn much. But we still debate because leadership is about human nature. We have various models and theories that explain the mechanics of leadership, the components, the logic, the linkages. Philosophies that try to explain the character of leadership, the principles and values of what a leader should be. Styles are the modes of behavior, like the personality of leadership, related to the nature of the relationship between leader and followers. Unfortunately, the leadership space is not well organized. Transactional, transformational, and visionary leadership is described as a model by some and a style by others. And there are leadership synonyms, the same or similar concepts described by various terms. And we have circular definitions that are confusing. Do you understand the true nature of the relationship between responsibility and accountability? their directions, which can and can't be delegated? Probably not. Confused? Don't worry. You're not alone. I was confused for about 35 years, since when I was a cadet at the Royal Military College of Canada, when I heard for the first time that before you can become a good leader, you need to be a good follower. When I asked why, no one gave me an answer that I found useful. I recently found my answer, and I'll explain it at the end of this video. My background is marketing, more specifically product development and management. And so I will look at leadership not from the perspective of an academic or a leader, but of a marketing guy and quite often a follower. I hope this series will promote improved critical thinking about leadership ideas that are being promoted. In this video, the first part will look at the flaws in the development process for leadership products. The second part will look at the environment, at marketing processes and how products are brought to market. In the third part, I have some thoughts for improvements. We learn from the role models we see and emulate. Unfortunately, leadership developers are providing us with the wrong types of role models, ones that are not really relevant to our teams. The first flaw in leadership development is related to team size. The vast majority of role models and examples of leadership come from the upper echelons of the business world, superstar athletes and military generals. Most of us, though, are amateur leaders of small teams, and so superstar CEOs are not really relevant role models for us. We're training people to be the types of leaders they do not need to be. Some background into the fundamentals of social organization. There's two important numbers, 12 and 150. 12 is the maximum for small team size, with eight being the ideal. Small teams get too complicated, too political, if they get bigger than 12. And 150 is Dunbar's number, which is the upper limit for the size of a tribe. The limit of how many people we can know well Small teams require direct face-to-face -face leadership. The leader is involved on a day-to-day -day basis on the front lines with the people that execute the mission. A small organization is composed of a number of small teams. Leaders now become leaders of leaders with less frequent interaction with the people on the front lines. Leaders of large organizations are responsible for numerous teams and have Unfortunately, infrequent direct face-to-face -face interaction with the people on the front lines of the organization, and they depend more on mass communication and organizational culture for leadership. Jack Welsh and Steve Jobs are wildly successful businessmen, but what can we learn from them? What can a customer service call center team leader learn from Jack Welsh? And does a charity leader want to lead like Steve Jobs? The next flaw 
pertains to the types of teams that we lead. Most of us do not work in a generic world, a mass market that looks like a big corporation. In marketing, a mass market is a large heterogeneous market where we have different types of customers with varying needs all being lumped into one mass, being served by one product, a generic product. To serve customers better, we divide the mass market into smaller, more homogeneous market segments where customers have more similar needs. We then choose a target market that we can best serve with a more specialized, differentiated product. We can segment the leadership market in a number of ways. The simplest being the three sectors of society that we're already familiar with. The private sector, where we seek to earn profit and maximize shareholder revenue. The public sector, also known as the government, where we seek to improve the functioning of the national infrastructure. And the third sector, the social sector, where we as individuals try to improve the common good, usually at the local level. The sectors can be further divided into small, medium, and large organizations, with the leadership requirements for large organizations being quite different from the needs of small businesses. The needs of the social sector, based on volunteers, is quite different from the corporate world, where people seek to earn money and promotions. But we use big business and superstar leaders of it as exemplars for everyone to follow. Leadership's getting more and more complex. A hundred years ago, leadership was quite simple. It was based on great man and trait theories. You had it or you didn't, and people did what they were told. As leaders started to care about people's individualism and respect them, influence-based leadership theory started to develop and leadership started to get more complicated. Influence can be based on manipulation, which is a form of negative influence, and motivation, which is a form of positive influence. Inspiration-based leadership becomes more complicated because we take into consideration new developments in positive psychology, needs, ethics, status, self-actualization, and the meaning of life. Inspiration-based leadership might be intellectually complex, but it might, in fact, be the easiest type of leadership to do if you have the right character for it. Confusion. Too many disorganized ideas. Over the last 15 years, there's been a dramatic increase in the number of leadership books. Thousands of books are published annually. Everyone has an opinion. Which ones are right? Are they all right in some way? Now for some marketing insights. To sell something, you need to have a unique selling proposition. You need to be better so that, that a customer chooses you over an alternative. But to be better, you first need to be different. And so everyone is different. And that makes it confusing. I'll use the example of a prism to explain what's happening. Leadership is like white light made of many components. The leadership industry is like a prism that creates a spectrum of colors from the white light. It separates the components of white light. We then start picking our favorite colors and start seeing a tinted version of the world. We choose a leadership philosophy and start acting it. We start to wonder, what kind of a leader do I want to be? Do I want to be authentic or charismatic, servant or super, emergent or visionary? Which is best? But do we want leaders that are visionary but not ethical, charismatic, but not courageous. So to summarize our look into the problem, we have role models that are not relevant to our size and type of teams. And there's a growing complexity and confusion in what we think leadership is. We need to simplify and clarify. And now for some more marketing. Let's take a look at the forces that drive the industry and contribute to the problems. Everyone is trying to build a better mousetrap. This is a good thing because it drives innovation and evolution, but we need some discipline and balance. The idea industry, the world of intellectuals, is layered with the creators of new ideas at the top. Sometimes the ideas are esoteric, interesting, but not directly useful. The layer below them are the synthesizers. They take ideas from various sources and repackage them into a model that is more relevant to end users. 
And then there are the distributors. These are the people that put the ideas in front of the consumers and popularize them. The North American leadership market, including books, training, and seminars, is worth about $20 billion. Researchers in the academic world, the universities, create and validate new ideas. Management consultants do some of this as well. The synthesizers are the developers of the training programs, the books, articles, and blogs. Human nature and the market dynamics create leadership fads, which I'll look at in another part of this series, that are popular for a while until a new fad pops up. How much do companies want better leaders? Well, in 2014, they were willing to pay Franklin Covey about $200 million, the Dale Carnegie Company about $140 million, and people were willing to pay about $3,600 on average to attend the six-day seminars, Date with Destiny, run by Anthony Robbins. In business, you sell more and profit. In academics, you publish or perish. Everyone needs to be different in order to be better. Everyone needs a unique selling proposition. Research comes from various disciplines, psychology, sociology, and the humanities, philosophy specifically on one side, and from management, political science, and military science on the other, each looking at leadership from its own perspective. When too many cooks start adding their own ingredients to the broth, the end result is not very good. In 2013, Ronald Riggio proposed the creation of a hybrid discipline called leadership studies, which would be similar in nature to the multidisciplinary discipline of public administration, which is a blend of political science, sociology, philosophy, economics, and law. Leadership studies is a great idea, but a long-term solution. We need something now. We need to become more sophisticated customers of leadership products. Most people think that marketing is about selling, about the price and the promotions, but that's only one part. Product and place are two other important parts of the process, and to me, the most important part is the product development. The first step is understanding your market and a problem that your market needs a solution for. Understanding the problem is critical. If you understand the problem, then developing a solution, a product, is much easier. The next step is to sell your product. The better the product, the better the solution to a problem, the more value you provide to the customer, the easier it will be for you to sell. My preference is to spend more time and effort on the development end. Unfortunately, others spend much more time on the sales end, overhyping products that often provide little value. That is why you are not a good leader yet. And now some thoughts on a solution. We need to declutter, to simplify. Albert Einstein said, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. Inventor Charles Kettering said, a problem well stated is a problem half solved. First, we need to simplify. Leadership has its own fuzzy logic. In creative thinking, we strive to think outside of the box. For leadership, I propose that we create a box that we can start thinking inside of. Before we can do any job well, we need to have a definition of what success looks like, a set of parameters for a desirable solution, for a desirable outcome. We need to define, refine, and model. The fuzzy concept of leadership is actually three interrelated concepts. The leader leads through leadership. Now for some deep thinking. Should we look at the concept of a leader as a person who is the leader, or the social status in the social structure, in other words, the job description of the position of leader. Lead is the end result, the movement of the team, the responsibility of the leader, what the leader is accountable for. And leadership is the process the leader uses to lead. The process is the art of leadership. Maybe we should think of the leader in relation to a team. Here's a thought provoker for you. What comes first, the leader or the team? 
Does the leader create a team or does the team create the leader? In my opinion, the team comes first. A team without a leader might be a group, not as productive as a team, but still capable of accomplishing something. A leader without a team, well, that's like the sound of one hand clapping. If you can't inspire anyone to move, then you're not a leader. In the context of the team, you can start to understand the leader. What is the leader responsible for? It's about winning. It's about performance. Zig Ziglar said, those who know what and how will always work for those who know why. The industry provides a lot of information on the how and the what. How many lists of leadership success tips have you seen? A lot and all different. But we need a better understanding of why. How and the what are nice to have, but we need to have the why. When you refine, you improve something. By removing impurities, removing unwanted elements, you purify. We're familiar with the 80-20 rule, also known as the Pareto Principle, which says that 20% of actions cause 80% of results. I think that this can apply to leadership as well. Now we just need to identify the 20% that is essential, the core essence, the attitudes and the actions we need to be good at. Our refined job description for the leader should include the responsibilities and the rights. What are the expectations we have of the leader and what expectations should the leader have of us? We also need to understand the context of the project, the environment and the objective. To understand what leadership is, we should also understand what leadership is not. Leadership is not dominance. Being an alpha male is not leadership. Gone are the days when leaders can say jump and subordinates say how high. Leadership is not management. Today we have a fuzzy boundary between leadership and management. We need to clearly delineate the responsibilities of leaders and managers. Leaders should absolutely not micromanage. It's important to delegate and disappear, but don't really disappear because you need to continually encourage. And we need to understand the levels of leadership. We looked at this earlier in the presentation. We have the leaders of small teams in the trenches on the front lines. Are these people, in fact, the most important leaders? We have the followers. But I think we need a better word. Teams are not made of followers, people that are passive and do what they're told. People on a team need to be active. They're allies, partners, associates, colleagues, confederates, teammates. In medium-sized organizations, leaders lead leaders. They need to have an extra something to lead leaders. And we also have thought leaders. While these leaders might not have a direct team, they do influence the thinking of both leaders and followers about what is possible, and they set a frame of reference for the actions of leaders and followers. Let's integrate the various flavors of leadership into one holistic model. Think about it. Ethical, heroic, authentic, humble, and servant, they're all components of character. Every leader should be ethical, heroic, authentic, humble, and servant. The people that need leadership development the most are the new leaders, so that they can develop the right leadership habits as early as possible. Most leaders lead small teams. So let's identify role models that are relevant to the responsibilities of junior leaders of small teams. We need to be careful about what we present as an example of good leadership. In the US military, there's a saying that mission comes first, but people always. I like it, it makes sense. Richard Branson is a good exemplar. He develops a character-based culture and empowers people. He's a fun guy. He's decentralized and empowering. People enjoy working for him. Should we use Steve Jobs as a leader role model? Steve Jobs, in my opinion, is a horrible example of good leadership. He was in some ways toxic. He didn't inspire, but he forced the development of great products. And how many people actually enjoyed working for him? 
And that brings us to the end of the presentation. Now I'll explain my understanding, my resolution of my pet peeve. The lack of true understanding of the saying, why do we need to be good followers before we can be good leaders? Yes, you do need to be a good follower, but it's not something as simple as knowing your place in the hierarchy in the organizational chart, understanding the chain of command, and taking and carrying out the orders that you've been given. The answer is that a follower is a subordinate, but not a subordinate to the followers, as the leader is responsible to be a superior, to be in front, but a subordinate to the team. We need to understand that our personal interests are subordinate to the interests of the team. We as leaders are accountable to the team and the team is responsible for the cause or vision. We follow the requirements of the cause. We are subordinate to the cause. We subordinate our interests to the interest of the cause. Being a follower at heart is about being selfless rather than selfish. At the start of the video, I asked the question, what is leadership? The question you need to ask yourself is, why do you want to be a leader? Is your goal to be successful or significant? My hypothesis is that we've evolved from a position of great man theory to a good person theory of leadership. In order to be a good leader, you first need to be a good person. But defining the concept of a good person is a tricky endeavor due to the subjective nature of the term good. I hope that you found this video interesting. If you have any comments on this video, either pointing out errors or improvements, please contact me with your ideas. I look forward to hearing from you.